Good morning, everybody. Our opening call to worship hymn this morning is number 395, just the chorus. Come in, come in and sit down. We are part of the family. We'll do it twice, yes. Intro's good. Verses 1, 2, and 3, and then verse 4 is the same as the first. No confusion, right? <laughs> wonderful day that you have made 
that we will rejoice in and be glad. Help us to find joy in this day, but also in this time of worship as we have gathered with friends, with family, and with you, O oh God. Amen. So a couple of things just to, to point out for you. Hold on. I'll put my portable mic back on. There we go. I'm on. Oh, there we go. Good. We've had quite the morning here from choir and getting things organized. Does everybody have their leaf? Has everybody put their name on their leaf? Okay, so we, we don't have to worry about that now. I don't think Nick got one. Nick, did you get a leaf? No? I'll give you mine. I got it. You got it. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. So you'll notice on this week's bulletin that it's just plain paper. Thank you. Next week, our bulletin colors are sponsored, mm -hmm. so there'll be something pretty on the front. If you would like to sponsor a video, please speak to Amy in the office, and then when it's sponsored, then we relate that information. The choir should be good, thank you. Um, but when they're not sponsored, we're just gonna go with plain paper. So on the back of the bulletin today, you will see what's coming up in the next week or so. Uh, session tomorrow night at 6.30 downstairs. Stewards are meeting whatever time you normally meet. What time is that? 7.30. 7.30? Whoa, okay. Um, next Sunday, orange shirt day. So if you have something orange that you would like to wear, um, for years, I had no orange shirt. I don't wear orange, but I do have an orange shirt now. And this is to honor the missing and murdered indigenous women. Um, just to bring awareness also for the, the children from the residential schools. So it, it's a national, not, not a holiday, but a national day of remembrance that we will um, refer to next Sunday. <coughs> It's actually the 30th of September, so the following Saturday, but I want to do it next week. So remember, orange. And if you don't have something orange, um, maybe an orange piece of ribbon, an orange hat, orange, anybody have orange socks? There you go. You can wear your orange socks. Um, but there's always something that we can do. Maybe we'll have a few more of these orange leaves we can, we can pin on you. Uh, the following Sunday is Worldwide Communion. If you know of anyone who would like communion brought into the home, please uh, let me know. And then our official board meeting, Sunday the 1st, that same day, downstairs following uh, worship that day. So I encourage all who are interested in the life, work, and ministry here at Linden Park to attend that meeting. You don't have to be a member of the board to attend a board meeting. So I encourage everyone to be there as you are able. Um, Amy posted here, also have all the announcements into the office Thursday morning by 9.30. Um, that's so that we can get the bulletins out earlier and get the work done in a timely manner. And then also you can drop off your fund script orders Thursday or to do, 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 Sonia Sunday morning before worship next week. So that's fun script. All the other community announcements are on a bigger piece that is in the back or hanging on the bulletin board. And I would encourage you to take a look at the bulletin board. If you are a person who likes to read scripture, the scriptures are there. If you're wondering what hymns we're gonna sing this week, next week, whenever, the hymns are listed. Everything is listed on the bulletin board for you as well as our community announcements. So are there any announcements that someone sitting here would like to make? Uh, excuse me. Uh, regarding the fine script, if people take one of these just to look out over and then write what we'd like on a piece of paper, which is a lot easier, and write a check out to Linda Park Church and give it to Sonia before church, that would be easy. This is a lot easier than filling okay. all this thing out. But so, it over. So just write down on a piece of paper the, the card that you want, how many you want, like the denominations, 
and uh, you don't have to fill in the whole page. And I think it would make it easier for her to see too. Yeah, if you just take this and you can, you know, it's easier for her on a piece of mm -hmm. paper and write down the name and what, what we want. Mm -hmm. and okay. It doesn't matter how much, every okay. little bit helps. Awesome. You know. This is one of the easiest fundraisers we have because it doesn't take any effort on our part and we are thankful that Sonia does that work for us. Linda Park. And if you're not in worship this morning, um, Linda Park Church, I would imagine they could do an e-transfer too, no? I have no idea. Okay, we'll just leave it there for now. Mr. Ken. Bonnie and I celebrated our 62nd wedding anniversary all last week. I mean, you got to celebrate more than one day, right? Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. For sure. Any birthdays this week? Yes? Your birthday? No, I have. Announcement. Go ahead. Um, just wanted to let everybody know, uh, Monday, Beavers and Cubs are having a registration first night open house. Thursday is Scouts, and Ventures and Adventures will also be there. So anybody that is has youth that might be interested, ages... Four to, or sorry, five to 25. Um, and also the Medvents will be hosting their first meeting as an open meeting at Matt's Leadership for Multi-Agency Training Center on Stone Church. And anyone um, 14 to 25 is invited to come and see what the Medvent program is about. Um, and it will be at 7.30 on the 28th. That's the Thursday, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So, mm -hmm. scout, Scouts, Cubs, Medvets. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you all for your questions and concerns, but most importantly for your prayers. Um, baby Arlo is now in NICU at St. Catherine's. He is over three pounds. He's off the CPAP machine and intravenous. He is growing and flourishing. Every day we see more and more miracles. Mother is doing, Sarah is doing much better. He's now able to drive and go back and forth to the hospital because Adam had to go back to work. But um, we've been very blessed and we are all so very grateful for your prayers, love, and concern. Thank you. That's wonderful news. What a blessing. Thank you. Anything else? I, I was, yeah, go ahead. Oh, definitely. That's in my list this morning. My cousin's been without power since six thirty yesterday yeah. morning. There's a lot of people without power. Yeah, yeah. that's why I mean that's different. Yeah, that's definitely. Why yeah. Prayer. No, that was part of my my prayer list this morning. So thank you. Just waiting, waiting. Okay, wonderful. Well, there are blessings around us sometimes. All we have to do is open our eyes and we give thanks. So I have two scriptures I'm going to share with you this morning. And the first one is from our Hebrew scripture, uh, Genesis 18, and then we'll skip over to 21. So this is the son that's promised to Abraham and Sarah. Now we had, we had quite a conversation about this at, at study on on Wednesday morning and I will add that you are all invited to join us this is not like a word study it's a discussion about the upcoming scriptures that we're reading so if you're free and you'd like to to drop in please feel free to do so 9 30 Wednesday morning and then we finish up about quarter after 10 10 30 and have coffee and whatever snacks somebody has made or brought which is usually wonderful um, and the quilters are also here at 9 o'clock, so there's lots of things that you can do to be involved. Our scripture begins. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat in the entrance to the tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed to the ground. And he said, My Lord, I find favor with you. Do not pass by your servant. 
Let a little water be brought. Wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to the servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season. And your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance and behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and advanced in age and, it, and had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, how can thine shall be fruitful? And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? And said, shall I indeed bear a child now that I'm old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you and in due season, and Sarah will have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, yes, she did. And then we hear about the birth of Isaac. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son and had him circumcised on his eighth day, as God commanded. So Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a child? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Will you join me in sharing the prayer of the day that's printed in our order of service? God of promise, Abraham scoffed, Sarah laughed when they were told of your plans for them and their family. Yet you remained faithful to your promise and gave them the son, Isaac. Help us to trust in your promises for our lives and to live according to your will. Now, the one thing that I, I will share about our study this week was that there was lots of laughter. Now, you have to imagine, I think I was the youngest one there. I'm sure I was the youngest one there. And the idea of any of us being told we were going to have a baby would have made us laugh. Now, I can ask many of you in your current age, your current status, your current physical health, the messenger is going to come to you and you're going to have a baby nine months from now. What would be your reaction to that? <laughs> the psychiatric board. <laughs> well, you kind of wonder, don't you? <laughs> but for some people, this is not a laughing matter. For some people who have not been able to bear a child, it's a miracle, and they're excited. They may question how it's going to happen, but they're excited. And then there are others who just have not been able to have a child. And it wouldn't be a laughing matter, it would be sorrow. Or it's an unwed mother. Now think Mary, right? Think Mother Mary. Kind of scary. 
to have a child before you're ready. And there would be sadness. There would not be laughter unless it's hysterical laughter. And I'm thinking that's possibly what happened with Sarah, that she was just laughing because sometimes the news is so sad or so, so horrendous that you laugh or cry and sometimes you laugh. Sarah couldn't have a child, but Abraham had a child through his servant. So if you want to read that story, go back a, a chapter or two. Other things happened. But here they are, 100 years old. She's over 90. She's going to have a baby. They call him Isaac. Isaac means laughing, laughter, the laughing child. And that, that's kind of always a good thing. A couple of questions that came up this week were, first of all, how long would it take them to get that fatted calf? Dress it, get it ready, cook it, serve it. I also like this idea of the choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Now, when we think flour, kneading it, we think bread, don't we? We think yeast. We don't think cake. We think bread. But, you know, because I'm a glutton for punishment, and poor Nick's been there with me, we've been watching the great British baking show. And every once in a while, they have to make a cake that's made with yeast, like a bread, so they have to knead it. And I'd never heard of a cake made like bread. So this is all new for me. And then I read this, and I'm going, oh, it doesn't say that she left it to raise or rise. And curds, well, that would be cheese. And then Abraham stands by them under the tree while they eat. Well, wouldn't he have sat down with them? And if these are messengers from God, they must be in human form because he's giving them real food. It's not like the angel Gabriel where, where no food was offered. So it makes you kind of question bits and pieces of this story. Right? But this is the beginning of a promise from God. And he had promised Abraham earlier that he would be the father of many nations, that he would have so many children that it would outnumber the stars in the sky. Well, you kind of wonder, here I am, I'm, I'm not able to have children, and you're telling me that's a lot of children because there's a lot of stars. But that promise, that covenant that God made came through the birth of Isaac. And Isaac, in older term, begat Jacob. And Jacob becomes the legacy that is the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, so all of a sudden you can count all these stars starting to happen. That's God's faithfulness, his ability to work miracles. Isaac, as heir to the covenant, all of which are foundational elements in the biblical story of Israel's emergence as a nation. So first of all, there's three things here. First, there's faith and trust in God. So it doesn't say that Abraham laughed. He said Sarah laughed. But there was faith and trust in the Lord. We are reminded that God is faithful and can bring about his plans in our lives. Even in the face of insurmountable obstacles. Second, God's timing with miracles. Now, wouldn't it have made more sense for God to come to Abraham when they were in their 20s and say, you're going to be the father of every nation and your wife's going to give a son? Makes sense. Mary was a young girl. No. 
got to wait until they're both old. Now, in biblical terms, they may have only been 30 or 40 because the, the number 100 is significant in that it just means he was really old. So maybe they were a bit younger, but when you think about her being past childbearing, so 50s, maybe 60s, probably about my age, somewhere in there. But God takes what's impossible and makes it possible, true? I think so. That's what miracles are. And the third here is about this legacy, this father of many nations, the beginning of the nation of Israel that we still hear about today. And the joy and the gratitude. We're in the beginning oh, Friday night with Rosh Hashanah. The, Hebrew, the Jewish New Year, and they are celebrating with joy and happiness, and they're listing what they're grateful for, what they're thankful for. And that has come down over the centuries, the hundreds of years. But what about us? Are we looking at that legacy as well? What are we thankful for? What are we most filled with joy about? Now, I heard through the grapevine, without my pom-poms, Ty Cats won? Yeah. Yeah, boo. Who's your team? Montreal. Montreal. All right. I kind of forgot that. So there's some joy in, in Whoville today, right? Because the Tiger Cats finally won. Who did they play against? Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Oh. Oh. That's big news. And they've won a few. <laughs> they've won a few. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> but I had to come to church to find out who won the game. I had to come to church to find out there was a game. Let me put it that way. Joy and gratitude abounds in this story. And sometimes I think we forget that in our own lives, that we tell our stories and we forget that there's joy there somewhere. So maybe the sky wasn't as blue this morning and it seemed a little dreary, but you're still here. And maybe the choir doesn't know all their music really well, but we still sang and we're still learning. And maybe you're sitting in your favorite pew. Are you thankful for that? Nobody took your spot. Hey, Sheldon. There's people missing. But I recognize that. But there's still joy. Oh, and there's coffee after church. Now, does that bring a smile to your face? There you go. Everybody's happy that there's... Is there food? Cookies. Oh, there's cookies. <laughs> you like the cookie monster. You know, if you get up in the morning, I'm going to have a great day. And if I don't have a great day, there's always cookies. I read that this morning. I thought, okay. So there's places where we can find joy, and sometimes that joy is found in unusual places. This morning, just as I was standing getting ready to leave, I looked out our kitchen window, and the rabbit was out there. I haven't seen, we haven't seen the rabbits in quite a while. I think they've been hibernating or something out of the heat. But he was eating up the, the weeds in the grass and just having a grand old day, and that sparked joy in me. I felt this joy of nature. I took a picture of the lone maple leaf in the window well earlier this, this week, and I posted that on my, my uh, musings blog post, uh, blog site, because it was beautiful and it was significant. And I actually had Amy and Elizabeth cut out all of our leaves for us this morning, and she cut out a few maple leaves to be colored, and I was hoping the youth would be here this morning to color them. And lo and behold. No, no. So if anyone would like to color in a maple leaf while you're having your coffee, there's crayons back there and there's maple leaves to be co colored and they're gonna go on the bulletin board to kind of decorate. So if you'd like to do that, please look to that inner child 
Because you can color and talk and drink coffee, right? You can do more than one thing. Yeah. A little bit more joy. I, I can see the joy in your face as you're thinking, she's crazy. What's she doing now? It's this joy and this gratitude. And I know that when Sarah had Isaac, that there was joy for her. And sometimes in the world, when a young unwed mother, or even someone who's married, who's already got five kids, and she finds out she's pregnant yet again, there's sometimes a harder to find the joy in that. But the Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. And there's ways through. And no matter what struggle we're going through at the time, God will help us find a way. You know, there's a, an old contemporary song. I call it old contemporary. Those are oxymorons, right? God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And I believe that's true. We make a way ourselves, but God guides us. And where there was no way for Sarah and Abraham, God found a way for them to have a family. Now there's more to that story, and again, I encourage you to go back a chapter or two and read about his slave or the other child he had. But this was Sarah's son. Joy, gratitude. Well, the theme for these few weeks, including Thanksgiving, has been family, hasn't it? We've been talking about the beginnings of family. We talked about Adam and Eve in the beginnings of the world. And that there's family. But I'm going to take it a step further. And at this point, I'm going to ask the choir to come and sit down in the congregation. Take your leaf with you. Yeah, take your cane. I do understand there's going to be a rail belt, so we have something to hold on to. Do you want an arm? Yes. <laughs> you know how to do this. Yes, I was. So. You were being silly, weren't you? No, I wasn't. No? Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, there you go. Okay. Everybody else okay? Again, I said, wonder what she's going to do next, right? Gosh, that is heavy, Ken. If you end up at hospital with a heart attack, I'm going to blame myself. All right. So, Marla, I'm just going to have you sit for a few minutes. Okay, thank you. of how you're sitting but and, and I think this this board came from some of Percy's things yeah I was asking Amy about something and she said well we have this so I'm gonna kind of draw from Psalm number one happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the paths of sinners, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law they meditate, they pray, they think about day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of flowing water. I don't know where you're, I'm going to be here, so you may want to come over here. Are you able to move it? Or, uh, I can do it this way. Still hard for I can't do it that way. So let's make a stream of flowing water. What goes in the stream? Fish. Pardon me? Fish. fish? You want me to draw fish in the water? <laughs> let's see. And rocks. Weed. Hmm? Ducks. Weed. <laughs> you want 
me to make a duck? <laughs> I don't think so. I may make another fish, though. You're hilarious this morning. All right, let's do this. Okay. Can you see that? Yep. It still looks like there's something missing, right? Weeds. How sharks? Pardon? Oh, I'm not making a shark. Weeds. 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 Reeds. Reeds. Weeds. Reeds or weeds? Reeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. I'll, I'll move over here so everybody can see. Okay. They are like trees planted by streams of water. Well, there's our stream of water. And I think maybe we need, let me see what other color I have here. I don't. What do we need? We need the tree, right? So I'm going to just, yeah, yeah, like this. That's kind of a tree. Mm -hmm. Good. It's fall, yeah. It is fall. But here are the trees. And I think in your bulletin you'll also find a tree, no? If you have your bulletin with you, you'll, you'll see that. And what does it say about the tree? Family. It's kind of a, a weird looking tree, but it's a tree. You know what it is by looking at it, right? I'm not an artist, I'm a doodler. So I doodle all sorts of fun things in my journals and on paper. I was gonna put a sun, but I don't think I have any yellow right now. So it's a cloudy day. We get that, don't we? What's missing? Animals. Hmm? Animals, oh. like a deer. Hmm. Mm. But the roots are in the water, so we can't see the roots. Animals. Never thought of that. But I could do... Oh, this is funny. You guys are going to really laugh. Don't laugh too hard. <laughs> the bunny. So there's a bit of a bunny here, and there's some um, earth, and some grass. And what? Leaves. And leaves. And a fruit. And a blue jay. <laughs> I'm not trying to blue jay. <laughs> These are great ideas. Okay, I need a fruit. Apple. An apple. Orange? Oh. <laughs> it's going to be a piece of art by the time we're done. We can raffle it off. So let's, um, I don't do a very good apple, but that's okay. They could be cherries. Right? But only on one side. <laughs> Why would they be on both sides, right? It's already been picked. It's already been picked. And the wind has blown. Oh, yeah. Right? So they're kind of connected to the tree. So we can say they're apples or cherries or something. Here, can you see? But I'm thinking of the family of God. Now, if we looked at Isaac and Sarah... There would be Isaac in a spot on this tree. So at the base of our tree, we have our roots. And I will put the roots in. Somebody said roots, right? So, oops. We have these long roots. This is my teaching moment, right? So we have our roots in the family of God. And those roots are what? Our scripture, our faith, our belief that God guides us. Those are our roots. And from those roots grow the tree. 
from those roots of Linden Park through the family that we have here at Linden Park. And you see where I'm going with this? It's kind of making a bit more sense now. Nick's going, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the bunny's ridiculous, but That's a little cool. white out would get rid of him. I do think it needs the sun, though. Because the sun shines on the just and the unjust. True? And it doesn't matter whether it's a day filled with joy or a day filled with sorrow, God's light still shines. Right? So we have our tree, we have our stream of flowing water, which yield their fruit, so we do have our fruit in due season, and their leaves do not wither. So if you look at your leaf, it's not a withered leaf. It may have color, but it's not withered, right? <coughs> and in all that they do, they will prosper. So that's kind of where this, this psalm ends for me. There's two parts. There's a good and there's bad. And I'm not going with the bad side right now. I'm just going to stick with the good side. Anybody else want to draw a rabbit? Um, <laughs> it distracts me, I'm afraid. But it's about the family of God and the roots that we have here at Linden Park. I've got roots. It's an old children's song. I've got roots. I've got roots. And I don't remember the rest of it. Because that's all the kids would sing, right? i got roots. And we do have roots. And that's what holds us together at Linden Park. And in this psalm, it says, In all that we do, and all that they do shall prosper. Now, prospering at Linden Park in this time of life for many of us will look different, differently than it would have 30, 40 years ago. When you were much younger and you were having your children and there were little ones running around and babies crying and all these great activities that you used to do, but that's not where we are. We're not looking behind. We're looking forward. The only thing we're looking behind with is the roots. Because the roots are what still holds us fast. True? It's the roots of Jesus Christ that keep this congregation together, this community of faith. And you are faithful. So when we hum and haw about, oh, I wish it was the way it was before. Do you hear the whine in my voice? Let's stop whining. Let's say, well, if we can't have it like it was before, what can we do with what we have now? And what does that look like for us? Because we know in the fall the leaves drop. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a map now on the weather Weather app, not the Weather Network because they're down, but on the Weather Channel, not the other one, they have a map you can go to and it shows you the progression of the leaves. And earlier this week, it was only down to, say, the upper part of southern Ontario where it was only 10% change. And yesterday, it was almost all of southern Ontario, 10% change. And in the next few weeks, it's going to get higher and higher till we get to November and pretty much all the leaves are down. What's that, that other song, all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. Yeah. Things fall, things change, things die. But what happens next is that miracle. There's time for rest. And I think during COVID, that's what we had, a time for rest, a time to think, a time to contemplate. But time for resting is over. It's time for us to come alive with the Holy Spirit and find our roots, once again, that haven't moved, right? The roots have not changed, the roots have not moved. Abraham was faithful to God. You are faithful to God. You have those roots. And you have a family here at Linden Park. We agreed with that last week, right? This is a family of God. Come in and sit down. We're part of the family. How wonderful. So, just because I like to change things up a little bit, while Sylvia plays her ministry of music today, 
I'll invite people to come forward as you are able, and if not, pass your leaf to someone else and stick it on the tree. Now the leaf will have your name or your family name or your nickname or whatever, but put your name on the tree. Don't put it in the water. I don't wanna see any leaves in the water. But if we fill up the tree and there's no more room, then we'll pretend there's more branches. So fill up that whole top with leaves, with your family name or your name, your first name, your nickname because you're part of our family tree. You're part of the legacy here. You're part of the future here today. So I'm gonna ask the choir to come up first. Marla's gonna give everybody a piece of tape so you can stick your leaf on the board and we'll leave the board for other weeks for people to see or to add to who are missing today. But if you'd like to go ahead and begin and we'll choir, if you'd like to come forward with Marla. Thank you.
over the next hymn, unless anybody wants to sing the next hymn. Is it a favorite? Well, okay, you gotta tell me now. Well, Jesus, I promise to serve you to the end. That was Abraham's promise to the Lord. I'm just gonna come down really quickly here and check on our family tree. What do you think? I think that's good. And I just want to quickly check, is there anybody here with us today? Kylie's here. Allison. Karen. Ky Karen, Kylie, Allison. Hi, ladies. I'm not sure you can. I don't think I can. Kylie said she can bring some to put on the tree. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Kylie. So Kylie, Karen, and Allison are all with us. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you for being with us, whether you're worshiping in person or online, you are part of the family of God. And thank you, Marla, for your help this morning. It's colorful, isn't it? The tree is still full, and we are thankful. As we come together in a, a moment of prayer, we think about those on the East Coast who are without power. There's trees down, there's lines down, high winds. There's another word. It was a hurricane. It made landfall. It became a cyclone. And it's going to be a while before that storm moves off. And as I looked at the radar, and of course it's going this way, moving up but moving over. So we pray for the safety of all in the Maritimes. We pray for safety in British Columbia as they're still fighting forest fires. We pray for the nation who's struggling so hard right now to find unity, to find that single voice where we can all say we are proud to be Canadian when there may not be a unity of voice. So we pray for the leadership. We pray for the leadership here at Linden Park that they are given wisdom as we meet tomorrow night, as we meet for the official board next week to look over our finances, to look over the faith of this congregation, of this community of faith. We pray for that. We pray for the safe and healthy bodies, for those who are healing, for those who are entering treatment, for those who finish treatments. We pray for the healing hands of the physicians, the nurses, all the healthcare people. For those who are keeping us safe on the roads, the fire department, the police departments, the paramedics. We pray for those who are lonely at home. We pray for those who are lonely when they're in a prayer. We pray for those who have no home, who are unhoused, as we say now. For those who are in encampments, we pray for students at the universities and the colleges who are thinking, this is the time when we can break all the rules. So we pray for wisdom as the lockdown happens on their outdoor parties before somebody gets injured. We pray for every family member represented here today. Those who are here, those who are at home watching, and those who are at home unable to be with us. And we give thanks for each and every one. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we pray, too, for all of the things that we did that we shouldn't have and all the things that we could have done that we didn't do, because we know that God will forgive us. All we have to do is ask. In Jesus' name. Yes. I just asked if you could pray for the daycares in Calgary. 
Yes. So we pray for the daycares in Calgary with the outbreak of E. coli. It's pretty serious. It's very serious. And I, I will add to that, we pray for those who are contracting the latest strain of COVID because it is active in Hamilton right now and elsewhere, but very active. So let's be cautious. Let's just be aware of our surroundings. E. coli is pretty bad in a daycare. It's bad anywhere but definitely with children. We give thanks that the Lord hears our prayers and answers them in due season. And now we ask that we stand as you're able, we'll receive your offerings this morning. Grant us, God, the grace of giving. Grant us, God, the grace of giving. For the life work and ministry here at home at Linden Park and around the world. We ask that the gifts are used for the best use of your service, O oh God, and we give you thanks always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, Will You Come and Follow Me, number 567. Will You Come and Follow Me, 567. an email and I say greetings friends in Christ I could also say greetings family in Christ because we are a family may we go this week knowing that God is with us that God watches over us that we have family here at Linden Park so if there's a problem of trouble reach out if you hear of someone needing something reach out be the family be the branches be the leaves. Remember Christ said, I am the branch. I am the vine. And you are the branches. I knew I'd get it. I knew I'd get it. But now let us depart in peace, knowing that the God who created the heavens and the earth, brother Jesus who walks with us, and the Holy Spirit that encompasses us, goes with us this day and always. In Jesus' name, amen. And we sing. I will sing it through twice. <laughs> Oh,
Hallelujah. Oh, do I need a release from you? Yeah. 